I'm just going to set it right here, Jesse, okay? All right. There you go. I think the police called us suspects as well. Yeah. Us. <laughs> Beside the point. I'm an alcoholic. My name is Jesse. Hey, Jesse. Um, you know, I was unsure how to start this. I think the best way for me to start is the same way me and my sponsor start out every time I work with him. I'm just going to say the set aside prayer that he showed me. It says, God, please help me set aside everything I think I know about myself, my disease, these steps, and especially you, for an open mind and a new experience about myself, my disease, these steps, and especially you. Amen. My, uh, my sponsor grabbed a hold of my son right before we came out here, and he said, make sure he checks his ego at the door. So, <laughs> so I'm going to do that. Um, there was something I was just seeing in here. I was working with a sponsee yesterday and, uh, it, I, I don't know about you, but it feels like everything that I read in this book that was written forever ago is like, they knew what was coming in my life. They knew what I was going to come across. And, uh, at the end of the fourth, uh, four to the fourth edition, it says modem to modem or face to face, AAs speak the language of the heart in all its power and simplicity. So uh, I'm gonna try to keep it from the heart. And um, yeah, I, uh, I was born in 1983. I'm just a pup. That's, for, that's a million years ago in my son's eyes. And um, my dad was an alcoholic for as long as I can remember. My grandma and grandpa were alcoholics. And um, my mom didn't drink a ton, and she just kind of put up with how my dad drank. You know, it was endless Coors Lights, shots of tequila, um, and it grew to vodka, quarts of vodka, and this and that. Um, eventually, he... Uh, he cheated on my mom, which, you know, in my eyes, I always kind of painted this perfect picture of my dad. He could do no wrong. Yeah. And uh, so there was something my mom must have done. You know, she pushed him away. She made some some kind of mistake. Um, I don't know why, but I, I just saw what I chose to see. And um, um, my, uh, my oldest brother started... Um, drinking and smoking weed and getting into a bunch of trouble. Um, he eventually got my, my other brother. I have two older brothers, three years older and five years older. They were both partying and drinking. And, and, uh, for my 14th birthday, my older brother, uh, Andrew said, you know, our older brother did it for me and, and I'm going to, I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to, I'm going to smoke some weed with you. And that, um, just started this mayhem. Um, I was, it was the summer before eighth grade. I was going to be school president, uh, the next year. And next thing I know, I'm, I'm skipping classes. I'm missing the AS, I think ASB meetings and, uh, out getting everybody else from my class, drinking, smoking, doing anything uh, except what they're uh, supposed to be doing. And um, it just continued out of control. My, uh, my mom couldn't take it. She didn't know what to do. Anything she tried to do to help me was the wrong thing. Um, it's not that she's not that she cares and, and wants the best for me. She's just trying to stop my fun. And so I, uh, me and her came to, you know, this breaking point and I moved in with my dad and, you know, he, uh, he, he let me take beers out of the fridge. He let me take packs of cigarettes out of the freezer. He kept the cigarettes in the freezer. I don't know what that's all about. I see a few heads nodding. Oh yeah. Keeps them fresh. And, uh, and 
you know, we would, we'd drink together, we'd smoke weed together. And, um, my grades freshman year were, uh, 0.92 GPA, which, uh, I was able to raise by the end of the year. Once I put my shit together to a 1.12. Okay. I meant business. <laughs> Got my shit together. My poop in a group, as I've, as I've heard it said. And so, um, you know, I don't know what the problem is. I'm doing better. And um, my dad decides he he wants to move with my stepmom to, to a nicer, sunnier place, and I need a fresh start. So they packed up to move to California. I said, I'm going to finish up the summer and live with some friends and, uh, and I'll move at the end of the summer, which of course I did not. Um, and being as I was living with friends, I had no parental guardian. My parents wouldn't sign off on anything for me. So it's their fault. I couldn't go back to school. It's the school's fault. I tried. They don't want kids to go to school. And, uh, you know, of course it's everybody else's fault. It's, it has nothing to do with the poor decisions I'm making. And, uh, and so um, this downward spiral continues. I'm, I'm passing up every opportunity in my life. I'm losing friends left and right. I'm blaming every single person for every problem I have. I'm drinking every day. I'm still only 16 years old. Um, and... Uh, I think I just saw something in here that says, uh, oh yeah, this went on endlessly. <laughs> Nevertheless, I still thought I could control the situation. Um, my, uh, my sponsor had me highlight what I related to in Bill's story, thinking, drinking, and feeling. Mm -hmm. This whole first half of his story is glowing. <laughs> and uh, and it continued. Um, my my first marriage fell apart because I was unwilling to try and and do anything, get a solid job, uh, clean up around the house, be helpful, um, be considerate, um, and uh, pretty much every relationship I've had with anyone friends, women, um, my mom, I pushed her aside for quarter of a, a century because she didn't know how to help me the way I thought she should have. And, uh, you know, as it says in the end of, uh, the back of the second, forward to the second edition, alcohol being no respecter of persons, you know, it, uh, I wasn't either. And um, I, I didn't know, I didn't even know I had a problem. Everybody else had a problem. Everybody had a problem with me. My shit's fine. You guys are the ones that can't figure it out. Um, I want to tell everybody how to solve their problems and, and I can't even get close to finding out how to solve my own. So, um, Um, what did this, oh, for deep down in every man, woman, and child is the fundamental idea of God. I, uh, I never kind of, I, I believe that it was, it was healthy for people to, to have some kind of, um, healthy belief in some kind of higher power, you know, when you're in the dumps and you need something bigger than you to hold on to, that's great. But, um, as in every aspect of my life, I thought I had everything figured out and what, what was and what wasn't, and especially what God could do in my life and what God couldn't do. And I, um, this, this program has uh, really, I'd say, turned my life upside down, but really it was upside down, so it flipped it right side up. And... Um, Right. And my, uh, and truly realizing my thinking was broken and, uh, my two days before I got here, my 
fiance left me. Uh, my brother or my son lost his brother and sister. Um, I haven't seen two of my kids since before I got here. And uh, and I I walked I walked into meetings this first two months and I couldn't speak. And whatever I did say, I, I have no idea. There was just words falling out of my mouth, staring at the ground, tears falling out of my eyes the whole time. I, uh, you know, I couldn't, there was people coming up to me left and right to talk to me and I, I had no idea what anyone was saying to me because I, I couldn't see past the tip of my nose and the flood of tears coming out of my eyes. And um, staying in a hotel for about a month and uh, First day I came in, there wasn't even supposed to be a meeting that night. Um, and uh, a woman in the program lost her daughter to something that she had gotten off the street. And they threw together a meeting for her. And I just happened to walk into a meeting that wasn't even supposed to be happening. And uh, I mean, that's a miracle right there. And me and this woman are forever bonded. The 24 hour coin she gave me is in the front of my book. Um, you know, the, the relationships I've found in this room are so real. The relationships that this room has given me back with my brothers, with my mom, uh, both my brothers are in the program. My mom has gotten all three of her sons back. Um, my son calls me and texts me when he's at his mom's and says, I did something I wasn't supposed to do. And uh, I'm like, okay, did your mom found out? No. But I was so upset about it that, you know, I prayed last night and I cried and I just wanted to tell you and get your forgiveness. And I'm just like, I, I don't know if that's what he's learned in this room or if he's seeing what I've learned in this room or the humility I've found in getting on my knees every morning and praying, uh, the humility I've found from being honest about everything I've done in my life. Um, but the fact that he feels that he can come to me to talk to me is just, it's unmeasurable. And, uh, and having the opportunity now to work my way through these steps with my sponsor, who just happens to be the same age as my dad would have been if he didn't drink himself to death at 50. Um, you know, he keeps me in check. Every single time I talk to him, I come strutting out of a meeting after a good share. Like, you hear what I said? He's like, what the hell was that? <laughs> I'm like, well, I don't know. Um, but being able to sit down and, uh, and work with other guys and uh, not try to share my message, but uh, share the message and the program. Because the last thing I'm going to try to give him is my program. Because my program, as, uh, as I'm sure you can imagine, sucks. And um, the program has amazingly saved my life, has given me the best relationship I could have ever imagined with my son, with some of the people in this room. Um, John took me aside the second day I came into the rooms and, uh, and listened. Didn't try to pour in a bunch of stuff and didn't try to tell me what's what. Just listened to me dump it out. And, uh, you know, I don't remember most people, but you never forget a little effort like that. And, uh, and he's, you know, he checks on me every single time I see him and, and, um, and now I get to do the same for other guys. And, uh, something I read constantly when I first came in, it says, uh, <clears throat> When I accepted my vulnerabilities and surrendered to a higher power, I am graced with unforeseen strength. 
I stumbled through the doors of AA in disgrace, expecting nothing from life, and I have been given hope and dignity. Miraculously, the only way to keep the gifts of the program <coughs> is to pass them on. And I'm honored to do that today and uh, be part of a program that teaches me how to do that with a bunch of people who show up for themselves and for each other and are part of my sobriety. So thank you guys so awesome. much. Thank you.